Welcome to the latest episode of the Closers Corner Podcast. My name is Greg Simpson, and as always, uh, we're going to talk to you guys today about what it takes to be a deal maker. Uh, for those of you who may be watching and listening for the first time, the premise of this podcast is to uh, educate the general public on what it takes to get deals to get to the closing table. Uh, there's a misconception out there that uh, this is a super easy profession, that anyone can do it. And then you can make millions of dollars just by getting your real estate license or becoming a real estate investor. And we're here to debunk that, but we're also here to educate you guys on basically all the crazy cool shit that we get to do as well. Mm. So today, I have two of my favorite guys in from the Outfast crew. I'm going to talk to you guys. I got Rafael Torres. Mm-hmm. That's me. <laughs> and Andrew Davis. Hello, guys. How are you? So um, we're going to talk to these guys about what kind of they – what their driving force for getting into real estate as, as investors and agents and let them tell their story. So guys, I want you guys to just tell me what it is. Why'd you guys get into real estate? I mean, I, again, I know the story, but tell the story, if, you know, why you guys wanted to be real estate agents and investors. Absolutely. So like Greg said, my name is Rafael Torres. Um, I started real estate in 2018. This was back in um, Mexico. So I, I, I left the U S I was here uh, for right at, 18 years and then it just it just hit me that I needed to move I needed to do something new with my life and I just decided to pack up all my stuff sold everything that I had <coughs> moved to Mexico uh, and I ended up in Cancun Mexico believe it or not I don't know why I picked that place but I did so as I was looking for a place to live I found this place that was forty thousand dollars it was a condo and the broker the real estate agent at the time he was like hey man you can turn this into an Airbnb. Now, I didn't have any knowledge of real estate or what anything was, right? So I was like, oh shit, but I can't afford it, right? Because it's gonna be so expensive and I'm gonna have to have so much money. Well, it ended up, I was able to afford it. I started with that one Airbnb and I quickly grew to five additional Airbnbs, which then- All in Mexico. All in Mexico. Okay. It was Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and the latter four were not so great. So I had to get out. <laughs> I lost okay. money. I did. But it's what just, was the you know, reason for that? What was the big difference? Was it just the management of them or it just was, bad locations? It was, it was like, I guess it was a mixture between the location was great. There were brand new condos in mm. Playa del Carmen. But the thing was, it was too many people <clears throat> doing Airbnbs in that area. Okay. So it was just the competition was too high. I was getting $25, $30 a night. Ooh. Yeah, so it was just, it was not worth it. Um, so then I just decided to, you know what, I'm out of here. I sold those, uh, and then I kept the one in Cancun. Okay. Moved back to the U.S., started in Virginia Beach. Okay. That's where I landed, and I got my first Airbnb in the U.S., and that was another story. <laughs> <laughs> My very first tenant decided that they were going to do mac and cheese, put it in the broiler, and left it. Caught the kitchen on fire. Oh, my God. First guest. Now, mind you, I already had the whole next two months booked up. <laughs> of course Obviously, you, of course you did. lost everything. <laughs> There's no other yeah. option. Lost everything. So I was like, shit. So what do I do now? So I packed up the little bit of furniture I had left. And uh, it was like a complete loss. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Jeez. You had to rebuild it, right? I, I had. Yeah, I had to, yeah. The, the kitchen was completely destroyed. So I had to, you know, redo it and everything. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm out of here because I couldn't find anywhere else in Virginia mm -hmm. Beach. And their regulations and their loss and everything was just it was too hectic. It's like, you know what? I'm out of here. So I was looking for another place. A friend of mine said, hey, man, come crash at my house. And you can sleep in my futon or whatever, and you figure shit out. That's cool. Because I didn't want to go back to mom and dad's house. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> I like that thing. option better. <laughs> so I did. I moved back to uh, Tampa and got my real estate license, and I just, I was hungry. I knew I wanted to do something with real estate investing, but I didn't know which way it was going to go. So long story short, ended up working for... New Western Acquisitions, and I was there for two weeks, and I realized that their model was not what I wanted to do, because I was not getting taught how to be an investor 
just try to sell deals. But just trying to sell, you know, deals with other people were bringing to them. And anyway, so I was just like, you know what? This is not for me. This mm -hmm. is not what I want to do. I want to actually learn how to find the houses myself and then how to rehab them to then get that greater uh, income, which is what we're doing now. Yeah, you don't want to work for peanuts anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah, understood. And we're not here to talk bad about anybody. Like, no, it's just no. not the way you wanted to be an investor. Exactly. It's and, just and, not a fit for everybody. But it was great that I went there because that's where I met Andrew. Right. right. And we kicked it off right from before I even started working Best there. Best story of his life. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Modest. <laughs> and that's where we met. And so um, we just kind of, our goals and, and dreams aligned. And we were like, oh, shit. I mean, we started planning from day one. We're like, all right, so we're just going to learn as much as we can here and then get out and do it on our own, okay. which, again, two weeks because it was nothing. For right. you to, there was nothing. So then, so his, what led you then, Andrew, to get into real estate then? Because obviously you end up at the same place and right, you have your right. own journey. So tell me about that so journey. So my story is a little bit shorter. Um, <laughs> with that being said, I came down from college. My parents had moved, so I'm from North Carolina originally. Then from North Carolina, I moved down. My parents were living here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, and then I, as soon as I came down here, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I, I've always been interested in real estate, but I've always loved sales. I've always had a sales job okay. growing up. So ironically enough, I got into a pool company, and I was doing pool sales, doing no drawings, shit. doing all these things for them. <laughs> Another pool boy, Greg. Another pool boy. <laughs> so I, I was selling pools to people, but I was going to people's three, five, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars homes, and I was like, wow, this is phenomenal. Okay. Like, look at what they can afford. Look, they're willing to do a seventy-five thousand dollars pool, and I'm like, you know, where does this? Where are people getting the money to have this dream to do these things? And a lot of them themselves were invested. I would have I would talk more than just pools. Of course, yeah. These you're building the rapport and you're right. You're like, but then I would learn a lot of it was real estate investing. Like, yeah, they might have owned their own business that had nothing to do with real estate, but they owned the building they were in. They had lease space commercially. Mm -hmm. They had all these different things that all connected back into one aligned thing, which was real estate. Okay. Um, and I, for myself, I did really good in that pool sales. I was able to make a good a chunk of change. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to get my real estate license on the side, like everybody says they're going to do, <laughs> that they're just going to get their real estate license and try to dive into selling homes. And make a shit ton of money, And make right? a ton of money, but only do it five hours, but only do it five hours a week. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, I got my license. I tried that and I realized that that's just not successful. <laughs> like it's either you have to dive straight in and be 100% committed yep. or there's honestly no reason at all to even dive into it and get your license. I tend to agree with that <laughs> statement, by the way. Um, I, as someone who has a lot of part-time agents, my goal is obviously to get them as fast as possible out of their day job so that they can. But I think the problem that whether they're here at Outfast or they're somewhere else, they're not committed enough. Correct. Mm -hmm. They don't want to work until 1 a.m. and get up at 6 to do the do to, to put in the work, right, to right. get to – they're not willing to do that right behind me. Hustle. Hustle. Right? <laughs> They're not willing to go spend months after months, if not years, learning. And I talked about this on my live this morning, mastering the craft. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I, – I don't know your guys' story, but, like, I remember when I first got into real estate as an investor and I had an agent that would send me deals on the MLS back when you could still do that. And I would be up till fucking 2 in the morning just mm -hmm. firing, running the analysis, <laughs> firing off offers for him to submit the next morning. Mm -hmm. And it's just what you got to do. Like, And then my wife will tell you, like, I didn't sleep for probably six months to a year on top of running my pool business at that time. Right, right. So, like, yeah, dude, it's just like you got to <clears throat> figure out what, your, what direction you want to go. And that's okay right. if, like, you don't want to be the full-time agent like you guys aren't. Like, but let's talk a little bit about how you guys use your license as investors to stay – at the top of the game oh mls absolutely that's 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 just it right is like we may not use it residentially but the fact that as soon as we see a deal or something comes up or we have the opportunity to just be able to hop on and scan everything look through it run comps see other renovated homes in the area i mean without that tool just the delayed process by like us reaching out to another agent. Hey, can you get us comps on this? Like mm -hmm. in Zillow, we clearly know where we don't want to go on Zillow anymore <laughs> and look at what they have to show us and zest that's us and everything my else. <laughs> so with that being said, it's it's just for us, it's still a no brainer to be licensed, yep. um, even without actively practicing with it. Yeah. Do you guys feel like I, this is a this is obviously a hot button topic and it has been for 
as long as I've been in real estate, does your real estate license hinder you in being a real estate investor? Yes or no? No. Absolutely so I not. actually Thank feel you. I actually Absolutely feel like not. it gives us credibility. Hundred percent. Because when we speak to <clears throat> sellers. Because, you know, we're still very involved in, in the entire aspect of Our own we, find, we, yeah. find, we find the deals, we find the, the motivated sellers. And, you know, while, yes, you, you know this, but we have cold callers. We have people that are calling and doing all that for us because realistically we can't do that. We can't Mm-mm. do the calls. Do the, I, I don't uh, do that all of those yeah. stuff. You know, there's so, not enough time in the day. No. So we have our cold callers. And do you <clears> want to be the one that gets the fuck you calls? No. 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 It's we're just past, like so demoralizing. <laughs> we, we had to do that in the beginning, oh, yeah. and we're past I've that point it. now. I've done it. It sucks. Right. Right. Sorry, oh, Melody. So put in, the, put in like your time that. and shout out to uh, my cold callers. You know, you're you're amazing. <laughs> yeah. We love you. <laughs> we do. But um, <laughs> no. But so the thing is, but once it's time to go, so we're actually gonna go meet with a seller after this. But we and, and we let them know, hey, by the way, we're real estate agents, we're licensed. Uh, you know, here's where we hold our license, and you can call and you can see that we're real people. We're not just out here mm-hmm. some Joe Blow trying to wholesale your property or, or, or people that are not even educated. And they and, and they and they're like, oh shit, okay, you're you're a real estate agent. That's great. Literally, if you go back, if you guys go back and watch our first episode or listen to the first episode that Suzanne was on, mm-hmm. literally it was the rate the one reason why we got the deals. He's able to look us up on DBPR as a brokerage, mm-hmm. her as an agent, go yeah. and look her up online. And it was just the credibility factor well, gave and, her the mm-hmm. leg up because the dude was like a stickler. Oh he yeah. Like, he like did a background check on the attorney. Oh, that yeah. we used to close the deal. That's we haven't had one that bad. No, but, 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 but another seriously. thing, too, just with us having our LLC and you being able to hop on a, a appraisal website and see that you can pull up multiple homes we own currently Bingo, under. That's my biggest proof of that's, funds. Right. It's not only proof of funds and your credibility, but to be able to show the proof of, yes, we own these things, plus we're agents. And it just – right there, it's like a stamp on it. It's like, yeah. how do you not trust these people? Bingo. Exactly. So – Get your real estate license because the other thing that's coming down, if you haven't been paying attention, I'm sure you guys have been, is what's happening in Chicago. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now happened in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it was was I forget it was another city or state, Philly maybe. I think that just came down and says if you are not a licensed real estate agent, you can't wholesale. Correct. Yes. You must have a license to wholesale now. It's coming in Florida, y'all. It's coming across the it country will. eventually. I, I'm telling you, I think Florida it's the might be soon. right move. I've been saying this for five years since we opened the brokerage that everyone should be licensed. I'm not licensed because I own the brokerage and it's just the way it kind of works, but I, I have literally toyed about getting my license, but right. I don't need to because I run you the have, brokerage. I was about to say, you have plenty of people. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like, if I didn't if I didn't have my dad when I first started as a license, my licensed agent and mm-hmm. had his access, I could never have done right. no. any of this. Absolutely. Well, because there's so much that comes with, with, with your license, right? So much access to different things. That you need as an investor. Mm-hmm. You need it. I think the cool thing, and you guys can say this, I, I, I don't want to toot our horn or my horn too much. I think that the way we have structured this as a community, as the, the how fast the deal makers, right? I feel like you guys thrive as being agents and investors mm-hmm. as a group because yes. of what we let you guys do. Mm-hmm. Because we don't give you, we don't put handcuffs on you. We don't say you can't mm-hmm. go do X, Y, Z. You can wholesale. You can fix and flip. You can sell your own houses. Mm-hmm. You can property manage your own properties you if you want. For sure. So. There's, no, there's no red tape here in that sense. And we let you guys do what you got to do to make money. Because we know that a lot of our agents have to be agents to make some money to then become investors. Mm-hmm. Correct. I don't want you guys. I told, you know, I had a little come to Jesus moment with him <laughs> at a TV reading meeting. I was like, don't you dare list Tyrone on yourself, mm-hmm. which we'll go into Tyrone in a minute. Right. But, um, yeah, I don't, and also, well, I don't even know if I want to go down that rabbit hole right now, but not listing your own stuff. But um, let's, too much that's, liability. That's, that's, There's too much liability. No, it's not even the liability aspect. That's, right. that's a factor, but then you're taking away from going and looking at deals because mm-hmm. you're de- fielding phone calls from these unfortunate dipshit agents out mm-hmm. there on the buyer side that have no idea what they're doing, that don't read, know how to read showing instructions or mm-hmm. realtor remarks. So then you're dealing with that nonsense while you're not, you're not talking to motivated sellers. You're not meeting them, raising private money, doing all the things that we have to do to actually make to run our money. business right. right so but let's talk about tyrone dive straight in dive straight in um actually let's go back a little bit i don't want to i want to tease it because this is your first deal as a fix and flip guys <laughs> right um what was it that made you want to join us here because you came i don't you got you went you went to a small tiny brokerage that did nothing it was just like a little guy to hang your license for a little bit but then you guys yeah. came here it's because we Tell were broke story. Yeah. so i mean no truthful i at the time I had, I believe, two Airbnbs that were just barely holding me on. Yeah, you, you called me about that before you joined. I was like, what do I do, bro? Yeah, like, so, <laughs> and, and, and I remember this was 
at the beginning of, of the pandemic and you actually so I started following you because I went to a TV Ria okay. with mm-hmm. actually was uh, Alpha or um, Net Worth. No. New Western. New Western. New Western. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and so <laughs> I went with him and I was like, oh, shit, this guy seems like he knows what what, what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like that's that was more of, of, of the whole, you know, light bulb moment for me. So anyway, so then I was like, OK, you posted something that's like, hey, if the pandemic has hindered you or whatever in an economical way and you need help, reach out. Like, I may have some odd jobs for, for, for yeah, you. Yeah, I remember that. So I reached out. I was like, yo, I'll come scrub your toilets or something. <laughs> but I, for, for me, right, like, I know, hey, if I scrub this guy's toilets and he's the one doing rehabs and stuff like that and he's the one out there finding deals himself, I'll overhear a conversation or, you know, maybe he'll see, damn, this guy scrubs his toilet really good. <laughs> Let me teach mm-hmm. him a little something. So I reached out and immediately you reached back out and you were like, yeah, what, what do you, and you, you actually asked, you're like, you have your license, don't you? And I was like, yeah, but I, I don't know anything. <laughs> It's hard to believe that you didn't know anything a year and a half ago, bro. Like, it's so crazy, like, the trajectory that you <laughs> right. guys have Right. I think we've talked about that before, and it's just, like, even when the day, I know he reached out to you, and we had done maybe a couple wholesale deals at that time, but we were still, like, keeping afloat. Like, that was basically just to p- for us to pay our bills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he was like, hey, like, I reached out to Greg, and, and he, you know, he's doing renovations. Like, if there's anyone who seems like they're going to give us the opportunity to learn... This we game. should go sit down and talk with him. And I was like, I 100% agree with you. At that point, <laughs> I started following you, and we were looking like we dove into everything you were doing a year and a half ago. And and I took your <clears throat> your, I believe it was your wholesaling class or really? something. Yeah, okay. the, the like back in the day, day. Remember? I don't. You did well. It was I do remember the wholesaling class. It was yeah. well, it was a it was an online program that yeah. you did. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so I did it. And oh, was, do you one of like the beta testers? Yeah, or bro. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, I released that right as the pandemic hit. Everyone's I'm, fucking broke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was a beta, so it was free yeah. for me. So mm-hmm. I was like, shit, let me dive right. Absolutely. Into it. That's right. So yeah. we were the we were sitting there like watching it religiously <laughs> every day and shit. Like we learned a lot. Mm-hmm. We did. And I left you a good review because it was good. I remember now. Um, <laughs> so a lot's no. happened in the year and a half since that. <laughs> no, but it was funny because that's, you know, truly we, we always <clears> talk <throat> about being thankful to, and, and I, I've had this conversation with you, Greg, but it's like being thankful to those who actually gave us a chance when no one else would have taken the chance on us, right? And Andrew and I talk about this all the time, but you did just that. And now rolling into Tyrone, I came with an idea, and I said, Greg, I want to do flips. Mm-hmm. And we said, hey, man, you know, we'll do whatever it takes, but this is what we want. We have this, 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 this dream. And you, you're like, okay. You believed. When did you guys actually join? What month? July. Was July? Okay. Yeah, I believe okay. that's right. Okay. Gotcha. Keep going. Just curious. I, think I don't remember, remember honestly. I, it might have been a little later, but it's September, close. Summer, I don't know. August, September, summer. somewhere. Shit, I'm terrible there. with yeah. dates. Yeah. But anyway, so so you believed in, and, and you gave us a chance, and then we came on board, and uh, I don't. We we got a couple of um, listing agreements or whatever, and we ended up not selling <laughs> either one of the listings. That was the. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, had yeah. the oh, one over one. here on Nassau, yeah, yeah. and then another one in. But Omira, the thing is, you know, truthfully, I'll say it. I'm not a good real estate agent. You know why too? Because we don't pick up the phone for all the BS, <laughs> like you said, that a typical agent really? has to deal with. No, I know. We got so sick of dealing with it, and we're uh, just like, we'll wait for the real offers. But you almost have to take all those BS phone calls to get to the real offer. It's like everything else, guys. Like if you're. <clears throat> you have to get through a hundred bad cold calls on the outbound. It's mm-hmm. the same thing on the inbound. Yeah. You're just weeding through the crap to get to the gold. It's like the sifting for gold, right? I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's a, it's being a real estate agent. I don't care who tells you it's not easy. No, mm-hmm. it's not. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to, you know. It's, Pretty pictures it's, of the house yeah, and just no. give tours and just, yeah. No, no. And, uh, either no. a buying nope. agent or a selling agent. The buying people are needy. Oh, God. And then they they, they they don't like the little minuscule Y'all stuff. are needy too, though. Like, well, yeah. investors, we're needy, so we need Absolutely. to. That's why I encourage mm-hmm. you guys to have your license. Right. So you don't have to be that guy because, right. like, you're going to burn out a buyer's agent if you're an investor. Oh, oh absolutely. Dude. 
I know I must I feel so bad. Dale, if you still follow me to this day, I am sorry, bro. I put you through the shit back when I first started. We were making four hundred offers a month on the MLS. Lord and that was back before wow. you had templated contracts. We had to DocuSign every Not the girl. Girl. dude. It was brutal. You I had a full time person just doing was, docu signs all made, day. He made money, but it, either way, he didn't make enough for what I put him through. So either oh. way, I digress. So, <laughs> Sorry, Dale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, but you believed, and anyway, she gave us the opportunity. Um, for the first deal, uh, my sister funded mm -hmm. the... Um, the gap. Yeah, she because we had the knowledge, which was Greg and, and the team, and then we were here. We are you know, boots on the ground, so we were there at the rehab every single day. It was the first deal, so we don't know what Learning we don't know. everything. Mm -hmm. We Absolutely. actually ended up getting red tag at the end who, of the uh, deal. Who funded that deal at the last minute, you guys? Oh yeah, so is, uh, <laughs> funny story. We had a, this. We had this hard money lender. Oh, talking all this stuff. Yeah, we're gonna fund you. No Oof, big that deal. Was rough. That was it was rough. literally. We're supposed to close on like Friday, right? Yeah. So so in great like forty eight hours. Greg before. kept texting me. Hey man, uh, you yeah, ready? So just so for full disclosure, I had the contract in the deal. It was in Saint Petersburg. It was a forty five mm -hmm. minute drive for me. I did want to do it on our inner circle accountability call. I said, hey, I got this deal. I really don't want to do it, but I'll do it if I have to. If anybody wants it, it's yours. Mm -hmm. My asking price is X, go. And literally, he was the first person on the call. I was like, I got it. I'll take it. Yeah. We'll go. To, I think we went the day, that day or that the day. next day. Yeah. day. And then Heather was like, if he doesn't take it, I'm taking it. And so like, she <laughs> met us there at the same time. And I was like, hey, you know, it's his first. He, he called it. But yeah, let's talk about the funding side. Yeah, so then, so then, you know... Because uh, some stuff just wasn't adding up on my... I've been, correct. been through this a few times. Mm -hmm. And see, and that's the thing, right? I didn't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. So this, this goes again with, you know, Greg and, and having him as, as, as a mentor. He knew something wasn't right. And in my mind, I'm thinking everything's right because the guy was telling me, oh, yeah, I got you funded, I got you funded, we're good, we're mm -hmm. good. And I'm just like, okay, he's got me funded, right? I didn't know that the process needed to be, oh, you got to fill out all this paperwork and then you got to do all this other stuff because, again, I've never done a deal. And that's why you have to get a, a good mentor because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, otherwise you get taken yeah, advantage like, of. Where's your loan app? I mean, it was like yeah. all of a sudden I'm like something. It's like, where's your docs? What docs? So then yeah. I call this guy and I'm like, yo, <laughs> are we good to go? Like, are, are you going to have me funded? And then... He was in ghost. Brazil. Right. He had just well, come back ghost, in town. Right? And yeah. then he's like, oh, I'm having surgery. I'm having this. I'm having that. I'm having the other. And I'm just like, you've known about this for, for two, two months. months. Because you had to go through probate. You right. had plenty of time to get your shit together. I called the lender because I'm friends with him. I was like, do you even know about this file? He was like, what are you talking about? Right. Like he was a representative for the lender. And I was like, bro, if you don't fire him, you're an idiot. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Fire I don't, him, he didn't? No. No. He still well, works for them. Yeah, it's awful. But yeah. But, no, so then Greg and Matt and Jeremy came together, and they were like, "All right, got, all right, bro, we got you, man. We're, we're gonna we're gonna help you out." It was the very next day. Jeez, it was like right yeah, forty eight hours, and it was like because because you tried a few <clears throat> other people. Well, I tried I tried Rob Isbell, I tried Travis, I tried a couple of different guys, and none of them could close that fast. And we really shouldn't have closed that fast, but we made an exception, and you paid for it. But I right. mean, it is what it is, and uh, we did get it done. We barely had enough funds in our our fund to be able to to fund the purchase of it. Yeah. And then one of my deals closed to fund your rehab, so we were flying by the seat of our pants on that one right. too. It's just what we do, guys. You know, there's always money moving, and that's if your money's not moving, it's dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, keep going. <laughs> so we got it closed and everything, and that same day. We start working mm -hmm. on the house, like uh, you know. Demo went in. I yeah. had I found I found a couple of guys. Um, Salem actually, mm -hmm. she told me, oh, you know, there's this guy you should meet him. Blah blah blah. He's Mexican, and he does great great work for us, but he speaks very little English. I was like, well, that's Perfect. great because I'm Mexican, so you know, <laughs> we'll Mexican really? it up. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so then. I won't say his name because I don't want you guys to try to yeah, take you don't get him. <laughs> that's our that's our full time guy at this yep. point. There's no. Mm -mm. I love that, like Francisco's the same way. I can drop his name out. He's like, I'm not working for anybody else, bro. You're just, no, I'm not even taking their calls. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but so 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 my guy comes out and you know so we start demo <clears throat> the same day and again I know nothing. So I'm calling Greg like, yo, so what should I do here? What should I do there? Like all this other. I remember stuff. our first walkthrough, your first draw, and I walk in. You guys remove the load bearing wall in the kitchen. And didn't have Support anything supporting it. it. Bro, it was it was going like this. I literally was like, whatever you fucking do right now, 
I don't, drop, have you, you guys drop go everything get, and go get something yep. to prop this up or your house will collapse on itself. Yeah. That was immediately went and got ceiling jacks. And, mm-hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we put a, that was it's a fun amazing. Day. We have ceiling. that video somewhere on our, in our Instagram or Facebook somewhere. Yeah. Not of me saying that, but of the walkthrough. Right. No, it was pretty bad. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. So there was a lot of, obviously it was the first flip. It was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of mistakes, but the house turned out beautiful. It did. It, it was, was very, very, well very beautiful. I was very happy. Uh, Shannon helped out a lot with the design aspect of that. And uh, I barely met her mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. a couple of weeks before. And she was, funny enough, was doing the flip uh, two streets down. Oh, I didn't even know that. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. Okay. So right so that was Hampton. So, so she, she would come <clears throat> over quite often, and, and then we would go walk around the house. And she'd be like, oh, what about this? What about that? And so, you know, I took a lot of the advice she gave us. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how we now developed a great business relationship mm-hmm. and now personal relationship. And we, she does all of our designs now. Mm-hmm. We do designs some, and listings. Yeah, and she, she, she yeah, she has a little power team with her in uh, in Claudia. Claudia, Claudia. yeah. Correct. So they yep. they list all of our houses. They do our design work, and and it's so easy too. It's now, so streamlined. It mm-hmm. allows us that much more time to. Well, dive because into she literally and, sends us a spreadsheet. We just <clears> click. Purchase, purchase everything Click, from purchase, lights click. to faucets everything. to vanity. So everything. simple. Yeah. And, 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 and it gives us more time to be able to, you know, do everything else. What do you doing. mean by click purchase? What do you mean? Explain that a little bit. So purchasing off of that spreadsheet, just oh, like yeah. the links and everything else. Got so it's it. just she aligns well, everything. Yeah, yeah okay. correct. So it's just literally I go through, click, and she'll, if she doesn't know what she wants, just like because when you order things from Amazon, you may not know the way it looks. Um, with that being said, it just... We'll order everything up front. Everything comes in. We'll she'll grab it all, look through it all, decide what, and then send the rest back. Mm, and sure. it's just yep. been so streamlined. Yeah, Amazon is a huge help. With oh, a lot absolutely. of absolutely. We get everything shipped to our and house. It's, well, it's and also cheaper than Home Depot and Lowe's mm-hmm. for oh, God, a lot yeah. of it, like, and especially and lighting, and and hardware, lighting. Really, yeah. It's the same absolutely. stuff. It's yeah. the same brand, 100%. same quality, same everything. Mm-hmm. It's just you know, so I, much cheaper. I have a lot of like oh, yeah. we used to buy the faucets, right? The most basic like. Yep. Hook faucet for the kitchen it must be like ninety nine dollars, mm-hmm. right? And that was a basic one, like the shit looking one, the builder grade one, right? I buy a fifty dollar faucet that's got the pull down. Oh yeah, and it's, like, the it's really nice. And like they're the sexy. Have in here, Forty nine dollars mm-hmm. on Amazon. Yep. Oh yeah, same quality, same oh, material, dude. everything. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. it's the same one I have in my house. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, Amazon is amazing for that stuff. Oh, absolutely. And again, she is the one that turns <laughs> us on to Amazon for all of that because we were buying everything. She's at like, Home Depot. why are you going to Home Depot? Yeah, for she was that? like, no, stop. <laughs> yeah, Keely did the same thing for me. It was a light bulb for me like two years ago, and that was even before she worked with us. Like, how right. mm-hmm. yeah. fast? Like, yeah, she was like, she created an entire like Amazon. Um, you know, wish list or mm-hmm. something like that for us. And she was like, this is what I have picked out for everything. What do you guys like? What you don't like? And I was like, dude, this is so much better than right. Home Depot. Absolutely. And the prices kept my budget down because we went oh, absolutely. over other things too. Right. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and that's the beautiful thing of having a great team, you know. Um, so not only do we have a great team of, of workers now, so we have three full-time uh, employees mm-hmm. for the <laughs> construction side. That's badass. And that's then, a big help. Which they, is help for the... the um, Permits and everything, and with the insurance, the mm-hmm. licensing, like now we don't have to worry about someone showing up and mm-hmm. you know getting that extra bit of in trouble right, for things. You guys got red tags because we mm-hmm. actually right, right. Yep. So. Yeah, so that was that was quite awful, but it turned out into a good thing. But it could have it could have been bad had mm-hmm. the um, market been a, any different. Sure, we got red tag, and it was three months that yep. we had to be on hold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So lesson learned. Lesson obviously. learned. Yeah. So let's talk about because that was a it was a win. I don't know how much you guys you made on that. And I don't give a shit, but you made out good. It on was it, a right? win for yeah. sure. It just wasn't as good. much of a win. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, I know. Just okay. We can talk right. about the wins. Talk about the yeah. wins. Right. We've already talked about some shit. All right, we kind of talk about some wins. <laughs> let's move on to Largo real quick. Largo is the all, win. We have all day here. We can right. do this all day. Right. We don't no, have absolutely. all day. No. Um, Largo yeah, was Largo. awesome. So Largo, we it was it was a direct to obviously we do all our direct to seller and. We were scared because it was four bedrooms, two and a half baths, pool home. Mind you, this is our second deal, yep. so we're just like, "Oh shit!" Twelve thousand square foot. And it was it nice was a purchase price of two hundred and twenty. Mm-hmm. Two twenty five is what we ended up paying for it. Okay. So we're sitting here and we're thinking, "That's literally double what you guys paid for the last one." Almost. Correct. Almost. Almost. So mm-hmm. we're we're sitting here thinking, "Okay." <clears throat> We don't have the money. Also, twice the size with the pool needed to be resurfaced. So it was like... So there's a lot of unknowns. And we were scared. But you know what? At the end of the day, we looked at each other. Everybody kept telling us, you won't get any higher than 350, 
three forty to three sixty, but three fifty is gonna be your 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 ARV. When we bought the house, our ARV we were thinking was around three eighty five. Yeah, that's right. We yeah, were yeah. thinking <laughs> it was three eighty five. And now here's the other funny part: we told a lot of other flippers like, "Hey man, we got this house." Because again, we were scared. You told me about it, and I was we like, tried to mm. wholesale it to like three other. People I tried to buy cause... it from you guys if you guys didn't. Yeah, want to and do then, it. but then you were like, oh, "I don't it's know." It's a little even farther than the St. Pete. I was uh-huh. like, ah, "I don't think yeah. so." And then, you know, a few others, and they were like, nah, we don't see it, we don't see it, we don't see it. So then I finally told Andrew, I was like, well, we're just, here's... Ride where, the lightning, baby. Yeah. I was like, either we do it or, or, or right. we're just chicken shit and we need to move on. Mm-hmm. And we did it. We bought the house. Mm-hmm. Which, what was your rehab? 80? We budgeted 85. We went over to about 92. Okay. But that happens because, well, and, it, and it's largely <laughs> because... A pool, mm-hmm. so we didn't know we were gonna spend no that much money yeah, yeah, for fixing sure. up the pool, the birdcage, and everything, yeah. rescreening that. And it was and all a nine thousand square foot pool, like depth, <laughs> like it was oh, one yeah. of those old pool. school huge that. pools, like literally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then brother. the whole so, screen for that yeah. needed to be uh, replaced. Like we didn't know aluminum, then COVID with everything couldn't yeah. get Mars site for the pool. Like it mm-hmm. turned into a whole thing Mess. with the pool. It yeah. was, it was, it was chaotic. So in ninety two, what did you guys sell it for? Four eighty. We listed for. Four fifty four nine nine nine. So you listed it for eighty grand or seventy grand higher. Yeah, eighty grand higher than what you thought you could sell it yeah. for. And then sold it for another thirty thousand dollars on top of. Right. Yeah, it was pretty good. Is that your best deal still to this day? Close. Yes, it is. It is still our best deal, but we had another really good one after that. But regardless, that was that was the one we looked at one another and said. We will no longer be chicken shit. If we, if we lose money, we lose money, but we're going to damn well dive into everything. Damn right. And that's the thing is like my one of my mentors, I forget which mentor it was that said this, if you haven't lost money in real estate, you haven't been doing it long enough. Mm-hmm. You got you got your key kicked in the beginning like I did a few times, you know, figuring some shit out. But like, yeah, now we yeah. ride the wave and now we're all crunch, crushing it. And No, absolutely. So since How many have you guys done now in essentially – the, you bought it in January. So this is, in my opinion, we just had this conversation yesterday. I find this really cool. So we started out at the beginning of the year wholesalers. Then he got the Tyrone through you, mm-hmm. which I wasn't a part of financially, but was there every day just right. as much as Raphael was to learn and absorb everything. By the time we got Largo, that was March, mm-hmm. we didn't sell that home until June, mm-hmm. and we didn't cash out on it from everything till the middle of Ju- like the first of July. So we're talking the first six months have gone by, and essentially one for me with us together, two total for Raphael. From then, we rolled into Laurel, mm-hmm. then to... St. Pete, Pete. then we have Clearwater, then we had another Clearwater, and then we just got a Dunedin. So by this... Dunedin's a good one right now, I bet. Yeah, the Dunedin one we're happy about. I bet. That's a a good one. Um, Anything in Dunedin is a good deal at this point. We went from... Waterfront property is a good one. Water view. Water view. (laughs) Um, But we went from half the year to two to the other half the year, pumping out five onto our sixth one. And it's, it's just amazing how fast we were able to just keep rolling. Love it, guys. Yeah. It's so been good. another good out fast success story, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say, I will say, you know, the uh, credits do where credits do. And Greg, if if truly you hadn't taken that chance on us, man, I don't know. I mean, we would have still done it because I'm very much the I'm going to do whatever it takes. But it would have taken longer. And so mm-hmm. right now in front of everybody, <laughs> thank you Welcome, sincerely yes. for giving, Absolutely. giving us a chance and and. Coming to the brokerage when you were, (laughs) and I mean, think about it, even when we joined the brokerage when we did, I mean, you only had like 30 agents at the time. Yeah, I was right around that. It was like 20 to 30 or maybe a little more, Um, and and it's just been so cool to see not only our success grow, but also thanking you in the process Mm -hmm. and seeing your success, this brokerage, how everything's blown up, the contacts we've made, friendships we've made with everybody in this brokerage, and it's been a good time. It's been great. It's only getting better, guys, because you don't even know half the shit we got going on behind the scenes. Oh, I can't Mm -mm. can't wait to hear it. (laughs) Yeah, you guys are going to love it. It's going to be a few months before we can announce it, but, bro, it's coming. Heck, yeah. Yeah. If any of you dumbasses are on my team thinking about leaving, you're going to regret it. Don't. You're going to regret it. So, anyway, thank you guys for coming in today. Appreciate you taking the time. Awesome job today. Thank you, guys. If you found value out of this podcast, please subscribe to us everywhere you can get your podcast. Give us a rating review on iTunes. Uh, 
We really appreciate it. It helps us get traction and get our message out there. Thank you very much. Follow we'll us on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> El Rafa us. Torres. All our stuff's in. It will be in the show notes, guys, so you guys can follow these guys <laughs> on Instagram and uh, everywhere. And we'll see you guys uh, next week on the latest episode of the Clo- Closer's Corner Podcast. Out. Damn. Nice job, fellas. Uh, and back. Hands up.